What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod and Wits on the Tech once again, and welcome back to yet another hash rate review. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the GTX 1660 Super, of course, pre merge for Ethereum, so we can have a better idea of what's going to be happening in the future here. I am in the process of going through a test suite of all the GPUs that I do have in stock, and the only ones that I'm missing in the line, really, as far as newer GPUs, is going to be the 6800 XT, which I will be trying to get my hands on. That being said, today, the reason we're looking at the 1660 Super, like I said, is to kind of prepare for this post-merge. We will be covering current profitability on Ethereum as well, though, and some tips and tricks on overclocking. Be sure to stay tuned right after a word from our sponsor. Today's sponsor is myself. To support the channel, click the join button below the video and you will get access to our privately hosted Rocket Chat. Selecting the 199 option will get you access, and after that, you need to head over to the Membership tab, scroll down, and expand out your membership perks. Find the section for connecting on social media, and in that section, there will be a secret registration URL to join Rocket Chat, where you can sign up to enjoy talking with other cryptocurrency enthusiasts and miners without spammers, scammers, or bots. Welcome back. So if you guys aren't familiar with the 1660 Super, no worries. It's been out for quite some time and maybe it has gone to the wayside primarily because there were other more powerful GPUs available for mining cryptocurrency. That being said, it still holds its own as far as power to hash rate and that sort of thing. And we are going to be working on a longer, more well detailed list of GPUs in total and how they compare on different algorithms such as Ravencoin, Ergo, and so on. That's where all the charts will be. Don't worry, I saw the request for that. But today let's talk about the specifications for the 1660 Super real quick. And that is going to be basically 1408 CUDA cores at a clock speed of 1530 megahertz with a boost clock of 1830 megahertz. It has a memory speed of 14 gigabits per second with six gigabytes of GDDR6, knocking it out of being able to mine Cortex, by the way, which you would need the eight gigabytes for. The memory interface is 192 bit bus and the bandwidth is 336 gigabytes per second, which of course translates into the memory speed that we talked about earlier. The TDP is 125 watts, and for the most part, that remains about accurate with some going up a little bit above that. It doesn't support NVLink. It has one DisplayPort 1.4, one HDMI 2.0B and a single DVI-D. The specific model, model is from P&Y and it's the XLR8. So if you guys are interested, you can pick this one up still at Best Buy. My tip here is going to be making sure that you use a Best Buy membership deal. You just click the little button when you're ordering it and it drops the price from 550 to 500, about $495. And at that, we can go ahead and calculate, of course, out the ROI at the end of this and talk a little bit about what you should be looking for. The power input is a single eight pin. So it does make that a little bit easier to build mining rigs with and so on. For example, also most cases, most algorithms outside of Ravencoin, the entire rig, like a six card rig, is really not going to use more than 600 watts of power, which is nice. So it's a nice entry level option for getting into building rigs and getting used to it if that is what you're interested in doing. So let's hop into the hash rates, of course, right now. On Ethereum, you're looking at 32 mega hash a second after overclocks at 91 watts. This is actually going to be dependent on the type of memory that ships in these cards, and for the most part, the memory is Hynix. And if you have Hynix memory, there is a trick that you may not know about. A lot of people do at this point, but just to let you all know, you need to take the memory and underclock it, which is a little bit uh, different than you're used to with, of course, mining Ethereum. And if you take that down to negative 502 megahertz in Afterburner or negative 1004 megahertz in Hive OS or simple mining, you will take your hash rate from about 23 megahash a second up over 30 to that 32 megahash a second. 
and that's super important to do. You can also crank down the power quite a bit on these and they will stay efficient at mining Ethereum so you can get that wattage down to 91 watts at the wall. So let's cover that once again so everybody's aware. Back here what we have set up is a 750 watt EVGA gold power supply that is completely isolated to only powering the riser and the GPU that is then plugged into a kilowatt to monitor the power. Because GPUs do have efficiency ratings, and this one being gold, you basically will see a, a little bit more power usage being used than what is reported in the software. So while the software is reporting 75 watts at the wall with the efficiency of that power supply, we are seeing the 91 watts. And this is where I calculate the, of course, return on investment from because you want that worst case scenario and for the most part people are running that gold rated power supply of course if you are running a farm the better rating you can get on your power supply let's say platinum or whatever the better power consumption you're going to have so i highly recommend taking that into consideration when you're building rigs while it doesn't add up a lot in the beginning over a farm it can add up to a lot so even though the power supply may be more expensive you will potentially save more money over the long term all right so with that out of the way of course that's going to be et hash so that'll be ethereum and ethereum classic taking a look at beam you have 15.36 hash a second at 91 watts and then if we take a look at auto Lycos, it's going to be 62.8 mega hash a second at 91 watts once again. On Octopus, it was really difficult to get this to, to actually function in a manner where any overclocks are making any difference on this particular card. And basically the only thing that you couldn't do was turn down the power very far, otherwise you would start tanking the power or the hash rate so the power consumption on this one is pretty high at 112 watts and the hash rate was 28.75 mega hash a second on ravencoin it was by far the most power consuming algorithm out here right now at 132 watts and with a little overclocking you can get it up from that 12 mega hash a second to about 14 mega hash a second it's not very good at ravencoin and you'll see that also that is reflected in of course the in of course the profitability on ravencoin as well so it's a pretty decent performing GPU. I think what you're going to be looking at, of course, with moving off of Ethereum, once you kind of get everything locked in, if you have one of these GPUs or a rig of them, you are going to be looking towards the Auto Lycos and Ergo, essentially. So just keep that in mind because Ergo right now isn't as profitable as even like Octopus algorithm with uh, Conflux. So it's really kind of an odd card. In fact, I would while I did purchase them to build a rig and we will be doing a rig with them, I'm not super impressed with its alternate options. I think because of the algorithms changing and so on, GDDR6 is definitely showing huge improvements for a lot of alternate coins, especially like Ravencoin. You can even see it in the 3080 Ti review as well as the 6600 XT review. Uh, which actually doesn't have that GDR6, but because of the newer architecture, it does appear to at least function a little bit better, at least power consumption to hash rate wise than the older GTX 1000 series GPUs. All right, so let's get into profitability here and boom. All right, so as you can see here, Ethereum is going to be the most profitable as of today at current profit and current difficulty with a 10 cents a kilowatt hour cost for power, where you will see a revenue of $2.51 and of course after power $2.29. Taking a look at Conflux, which is going to be the octopus algorithm, that is going to be second most profitable to Ethereum with a revenue of $2.40 with a profit of $2.13 after power. And then Ravencoin comes in third. 
So like I said, the disappointment is, is while it does function best on Ergo, it doesn't really come into the charts until a little bit further down here. And Ravencoin's power consumption is pretty insane. But Ravencoin coming in at third with a revenue of $2.15 with a power cost or power or profit after power cost of $1.84 in US. And then you have Ethereum Classic coming in after that. And then, of course, the Ergo with the Auto Lycos algorithm coming in at $1.71 in revenue with after power profit of $1.49 in U.S. And then Beam coming in further down there at $1.55 in revenue with a, with a profit of $1.33 after power. So there's kind of all the coins that you can take a look at and just go ahead and make your decisions for the 1660 Super and if it's a good option for you. If we take a look at the calculator here and we took the $2.30 and divided the $550 price of these currently at Best Buy, you would have a 240 day ROI. And then if you, you of course took into account the discount, your ROI is 215 days. Now, here's, here's what you have to start taking into account with, of course, the merge coming up. You want to take a look at other profitable coins and start trying to make those determinations, of course, as well. And this could go even further where you say, okay, I think the merge is going to happen in Q2 or Q1, end of Q1 in 2022. And you could calculate out a few days of that and then a lower cost coin. Obviously, these are moving targets, but you need to have kind of an idea of what's happening, right? So just to get a good idea, though, right now, or kind of the idea, if we did the 500 divided by 214, or not 214, 213, you would have an ROI of 234 days. All right, so let's talk about return on investments and how everybody feels about them. Because this, this is a little difficult of a topic to talk about with mining. When the days look like this, 234 days or whatever, right? Once it's over that 200-day ROI mark, we've talked about, of course, not wanting to purchase GPUs that have a longer ROI than the basically the timeline for the merge just to protect yourself. That being said, because we are still kind of in this Bitcoin super cycle and we're looking at the price going up even further that may change things It's it's a very Complicated thought process to go through when you're talking about what you want to do if you're a home miner I still wouldn't recommend purchasing of course more and more things that could put you in the red if of course the mining market tanks that being said, if you're trying to build up a farm and it's what you want to do for a living and this is kind of a long-term thing, then of course that may shift your perspective. At this point, because I am building a farm out personally, I am trying to basically get as much hash power that I possibly can and that includes ASICs as well as GPUs and even GPUs that have over 200 day ROI. When I got back into mining, uh, heavily here at the, I guess, the beginning of 2020 or end of 2020, sort of around that August time frame, about a year ago is when we got back into mining. Essentially, what the ROI was on pretty much all GPUs at that time was that 230 to 300 day ROI. And we didn't have, of course, the scare of the merge being as close as it is now. But all of those cards paid themselves off much quicker than the 200 day ROI. And I was pur purchasing them for 350 to 400 a pop. And then they were paid off with uh, as soon as that bull run hit. So it's a little unpredictable, but as long as you're in the profit and you're making money after your power cost, you should be in the green, right? And that's kind of the entire point of this of this game for mining cryptocurrency. So don't be too scared of 200 day ROIs or 300 day ROIs or whatever, but whatever you can keep that down to is going to be the best. Another thing I want to address is the idea of negotiating purchasing used hardware or hardware in general based on dollar per hash rate, right? And my only problem with that is 
that's fine if you're negotiating that with an individual and that's the the negotiation you want to do as far as purchasing hardware or whatnot but that doesn't mean as a miner that you don't calculate your roi and try to figure out you know what it's going to be worst case we also have to take into account and what i've been looking at is the increase in difficulty on some of these other coins and part of the research we're doing here as far as putting all these basically retesting everything retesting all the cards is to see what cards are performing best on what algorithms right so because raven coins more profitable on the 3080 ti right it doesn't mean it's more profitable than the 1660 supers right so conflux was more profitable for the 1660 supers so if the merge happens and we expect all of the cards to go to whatever their next best performing coin is how's that profitability going to work out as far as the increase in difficulty on the various networks i have to gather all the data to determine that and you guys can follow along with me as we go through it so it just depends on how many of those cards are in circulation i think the big ones you're going to want to basically calculate is going to be like rx 580s for example because we know there's a ton around so what's the most next most profitable coin for you know the rx 580s and if we determine basically kind of a general idea of how much hash power we think is being run by 580s what's that going to do the, to the difficulty of the network that those move to once the merge takes place on ethereum these are the thought processes i'm going through as a miner right now and kind of what i'm trying to determine and figure out thanks for watching be sure to leave a like comment and subscribe down below and i will see you next tuesday if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to see more. Also, you can check out this playlist for more content talking about cryptocurrency.